Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us, fall afresh on us. Yes, fall afresh, afresh in feeling, afresh touch from you. That's what we would like today on this beautiful July 5th. One day after we have nationally celebrated greatly our wonderful country and the God who is the Lord over this country. And so I welcome you today on July 5th to the reading of the Word of God. And today we begin a new book in the Old Testament. We would say First Chronicles chapter 1, verse 1. If you would like to please turn there and even if you have to go to your index, go there, take the time and follow along with us. And I am reading from the New King James, okay, to make it simple for those people who are not maybe that familiar with the Word of God. It's more to our everyday language. So you might want to get that one if you don't have it because it's hard to follow in another version. I understand that. Scott has taught us that First Chronicles 1, if you're going to go for the Hebrew, it is Aleph Divrei Hayamin. Aleph Divrei Hayamin. And it means words of the days. First Chronicles, words of the days. And Jane is going to have herself an incredible time here pronouncing names. So please forgive me for every single one that's wrong. But we need to read the lineage. It's important. It's important to know your own lineage. It brings such light to your life and your manners and your ways and, and the customs. It's fun to know the customs of your ancestors. So let's read on here. And if you would look up these names, they all have a meaning. And many times, a list of names, it just reads like a whole sentence. Please do that. Just Google it. Go there and say, what's the meaning of the name Adam? What's the meaning of the name Seth? And write it down, put it all together. It is fascinating. All right. So... Elef Divre Hayamin, First Chronicles 1, Adam, Seth, Enosh, Canaan, Mahalalal, Yared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lemach, Noah, Shem, Ham, and Yepeth. The sons of Yepeth were Gomer, Magog, Madi, Yevan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tiras. The sons of Gomer were Ashkenaz, Depath, Togermach, and I think I've told you before, my first guide on my first trip to Israel, Yozi Ashkenazi was his name, and he said, and I can find my lineage clear back to the beginning, and if you look, it is Ashkenaz, Depath, and Togermach. The sons of Yevon were Elisha, Tarshisha, Kittim, and Rodamine, Neem. The sons of Ham were Cush, Mizram, Put, and Canaan. The sons of Cush were Seba, Havila, Sabta, Rama, and Sabtichach. The sons of Rama were Sheba and Dedan. Cush begot Nimrod, remember him? 
he began to be a mighty one on the earth. He was a warrior. Misraim begot Ludim, Anamim, Lephabim, Nepatohim, Pathrasim, Kashlehim, from whom came the Philistines and the Kaphtorim. Canaan begot Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth, the Jebusite, the Amorite, and the Girgashite, the Hevite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, the Arvadite, the Semarite, and the Hamathrite. The sons of Shem were Elam, Asher, Apasad, Lud, Amran, Uz, Hul, Gator, and Meshach. Apasad began begot Shelah, and Shelah begot Eber. To Eber were born two sons. The name of the one was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided. So that must be what that name means, divided. And his brother's name was Yachtan. Yachtan begot Almadad, Shelep, Hazarmaveth, Yera, Hadaram, Uzal, Dikla, Abel, Abemael, Sheba, Ophir, Havilah, and Yobab. Quite a family. All these were the sons of Yachtan. Shem, Arpasad, Shela, Eber, Peleg, Reu, Serug, Nahor, Terah, and Abram. Oh, here we go. Who is Abraham? The sons of Abraham were Isaac and Ishmael. These are their genealogies. The firstborn of Ishmael was Nebaiot, and then Kedar, Abil, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, and Tema, Yeter, Nipish, and Kedama. Quite a family. These were the sons of Ishmael. Now the sons born to Keturah, Abraham's concubine, were Zimram, Yakshan, Midan, Midian, Ishbach, and Shua. The sons of Yakshan were Sheba and Dedan. The sons of Midian were Eleph, Epher, Haak, Abedah, and Eldach. All these were the children of Keturah. And Abraham begot Ixach, Isaac. The sons of Isaac were Esau and Israel. The sons of Esau were Elipaz, Ruel, Uesh, Yalam, and Korah. And the sons of Elipaz were Taman, Oman, Zep, Zephi, Getam, and Kenaz, and by Tima, Amalek. The sons of Ruel were Nahat, Zerah, Shammah, and Misa. The sons of Seir were Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anna, Dishan, Eser, and Dishan. And the sons of Lotan were Hori and Homam. Lotan's sister was Timna. The sons of Shobal were Elian, Menahat, Ebel, Shepi, and Onam. The sons of Zibion were Ayach and Anach. The son of Anach was Dishan. The sons of Dishan were Hamran, Ishban, Ithran, and Sharan. The sons of Ezer were Bilhan, Zavan, and Yachtan. The sons of Dishan were Uz and Aran. Now these were the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before a king reigned over the children of Israel. Bela, the son of Beor, and the name of his city was Dinhabah. And when Bela died, Yobab, the son of Zerah of Bozrah, reigned in his place. When Yobab died, Husham of the land of the Temanites reigned in his place. And when Husham died, Hadad, the son of Bedad, who attacked Midian in the field of Moab, reigned in in his place. The name of his city was Avit. And when Hobad died, Shamla of Masurka reigned in his place. And when Shamla died, Shaul, or we would say Saul, 
Shaul of Rehoboth by the river reigned in his place. And when Shaul died, Baal Hanan, the son of Achbor, reigned in his place. And when Baal Hanan died, Hadad reigned in his place. And the name of his city was Pai. His wife's name was Mahedabel, the daughter of Matred, the daughter of Mezahab. Hadad died also. And the chiefs of Edom were Chief Timna, Chief Alia, Chief Yeteth, and Chief Aholabamach, Chief Ela, Chief Pinon, Chief Kenez, Chief Taman, Chief Mibzar, Chief Magdiel, and Chief Iram. These were the chiefs of Edom. <clears throat> and we move right along to chapter 2 of Elef Divrei HaYamin, First Chronicles. These were the sons of Israel. Reuben, now you're going to recognize these. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, Dan, Yosef, Benjamin, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. The sons of Judah were Er, Onan, and Shelah. These three were born to him by the daughter of Shua, the Canaanitess. Er, the firstborn of Judah, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, so he killed him. Wow! And Tamar, his daughter-in-law, bore him Perez and Zerah, all the sons of Judah were five. The sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamul. The sons of Zerah were Zimri, Etan, Haman, Calco, and Dara, five of them in all. The sons of Carmi was Achar, the troubler of Israel. Woo! He did a bunch of stuff to earn that title. Who transgressed in the accursed thing. The son of Etan was Azariah. Also the sons of Hezron, who were born to him, were Yeramiel, Ram, and Shelobai. Ram begot Aminadab, and Aminadab begot Nashan, leader of the children of Judah. Nashan begot Salma, and Salma begot Boaz. You recognize him? Boaz begot Obed, and Obed begot Jesse. Jesse begot Eliab, his firstborn, Abinadab the second, Shemie the third, Natanel the fourth, Radi the fifth, Kazim the sixth, and David the seventh. Now their sisters were Zeruiah and Abigail. And the sons of Zeruiah were Abashi, Joab, and Asahel, three of them. Abigail bore Amasa, and the father of Amasa was Yetor, the Ishmaelite. How about all that? Well, I made it. <laughs> Pardon me, Lord, for all the mispronunciations. <clears throat> And we move right along, praise God, to the book of Acts. We have been enjoying it for many days now, and we are up to chapter 23. Acts 23. But the following night, the Lord stood by him. And if you don't understand what all he went through before that happened, I suggest you reread. It's only 23 chapters. Read and find out what all happened. The Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Shaul, Paul, for as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness at Rome. Da, 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 da. And when it was day, some of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under an oath, saying that they would neither eat nor drink 
till they had killed Paul. Huh. Well, it ended up they couldn't keep that up, could they? So that was all a big bunch of nonsense. Now, there were more than 40 who had formed this conspiracy. They came to the chief priests and elders, and they said, We have bound ourselves under a great oath that we will eat nothing until we have killed Paul. Now you, therefore, together with the council, suggest to the commander that he be brought down to you tomorrow, as though you were going to make further inquiries concerning him. But we are ready to kill him before he comes near. So when Paul's sister's son heard of their ambush, he went and entered the barracks and told Paul. And then Paul called one of the centurions to him and said, Take this young man to the commander, for he has something to tell him. So he took him and he brought him to the commander and said, Paul, the prisoner, called me to him and asked me to bring this young man to you. He has something to say to you. And then the commander took him by the hand, went aside, and ask privately, what is it that you have to tell me? And he said, the Jews have agreed to ask that you bring Paul down to the council tomorrow as though they were going to inquire more fully about him, but do not yield to them for more than 40 of them lie and wait for him, men, who have bound themselves by an oath that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now they are ready, waiting for the promise from you. <clears throat> so the commander let the young man depart and commanded him, tell no one that you have revealed these things to me. And he called for two centurions, saying, Prepare 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen, and 200 spearmen to go to Caesarea at the third hour of the night and provide mounts to set Paul on and bring him safely to Felix the governor. He wrote a letter in the following manner, Claudius Lysias, to the most excellent governor, Felix, greetings. This man was seized by the Jews and was about to be killed by them. Coming with the troops, I rescued him, having learned that he was a Roman. And when I wanted to know the reason they accused him, I brought him before their council. I found out that he was accused concerning questions of their law, but had nothing charged against him deserving of death or chains. And when it was told me that the Jews lay in wait for the man, I sent him immediately to you and also commanded his accusers to state before you the charges against him. Farewell. And then the soldiers, as they were commanded, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris. The next day they left the horsemen to go on with him and returned to the barracks. When they came to Caesarea and had delivered the letter to the governor, they also presented Paul to him. And when the governor had read it, he asked what province he was from. And when he understood that he was from Cilicia, he said, I will hear you when your accusers also have come. And he commanded him to be kept in Herod's praetorium. The situation is heating up. Come back tomorrow. But you don't have to wait. Why don't you read ahead for yourself? 
my whole point of being here is not to have a program. My whole point is to get the body of Christ opening up their Bibles and reading it for themselves. Many Christians never open a Bible. That can't happen. We only have one book. We don't have a set of encyclopedias from God. He doesn't renew it and add to it every year. This is it. This is all we need. This is the whole story. Till Jesus comes. And Jesus is the one who's fulfilling this word. Please, please, you will love it when you get into it for yourself. All right, let's move right along. We have begun reading the Psalms for the second time for the year, and we are reading today Psalm 3. Psalm 3. I hope you will turn in your Bible back in the Old Testament and find Psalm 3. This is another Psalm of David when he fled from Absalom, his son. Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say of me, there is no help for him in God. Selah, which means stop and contemplate what's being read. Take it in. Chew on it. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill, Selah. I lay down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your people. Selah. Isn't that beautiful? David took courage and just declared, I will not be afraid of ten thousands because he trusted in the Lord. And that's the great lesson that we can take from this psalm. We should not fear anyone as long as we are following the Lord, following him, praying to him. He will work things out. All right, we're going to wrap up today's exciting reading with Proverbs chapter 18, verses 14 and 15. Proverbs, Mishle, chapter 18, verses 14 and 15. The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness. Oh, that's a good word. And it's true. Just trust the Lord for healing. The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness. But who can bear a broken spirit? That's the hard one, isn't it? When your heart has been broken. Very hard but healable, very much healable by God. The heart of the prudent acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. The ear of the wise, are you wise? Are your ears seeking knowledge this morning? From God's mighty word? I pray so. So let's wrap it all up with wonderful prayer. 
and I'm sure you have a list of your own. Father God, once again, we are so grateful for your word. We are so grateful for peace in our land that we can have our Bible and we can read it and enjoy it and share it and get it out to the world. The world, so much of it is hungry for an answer. They are crying. They are wondering if life is always going to be this miserable. And we need to lead them to Jesus. To Jesus, that they might enjoy their salvation from all of it. So, Father, we had asked you to send the Holy Spirit out everywhere to bring many to you today. Many. Bring the one that's farthest from you with a miserable life. Bring that person to you today to enjoy salvation. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for this wonderful group of brothers and sisters. We can all get together and start our day in such a wonderful way. Lord, we hold up Jerusalem to you, and we pray for her peace. Please, Lord, let peace rule and reign in Jerusalem. There are many trying to stir up trouble. There are many who want to destroy and kick the Jews out of the land. But you have brought them back, and you are watching over your people. And they're not going to be kicked out this time. They're there to stay now. It's their inheritance. And you are working to bring your people home. How wonderful to see. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Lord, we pray for Bibi Netanyahu, the Prime Minister, and the Knesset, the ruling body. And we'd ask, Lord, that they would be guided by Holy Ghost, by Ruk HaKodesh the Holy Spirit, in everything they do and say today. Please, Lord, guide them to do and make decisions that are wise for the people of the land. Father God, I switch my heart and my prayer to America. And Lord, I hold America up to you. And we celebrated and we sang godly songs and we prayed and we had great dinners and lunches and fellowship times together. And Lord, all of that holds a nation together in love. And we thank you, Lord, for your love, for all the love comes from you. So we thank you for that. Lord, let it not be just a weekend celebration, but let that love continue every day. Let it grow. Let people flock to the body of Christ to build the body of Christ up that we might be ready when you break through the skies and the clouds and come the second time. So Lord, we hold up many, many relatives, many friends that we know do not know you, many who just swear your name, many who just think it's a joke, they think it's a bunch of sissies and they do not realize that their eternal life depends on accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. Savior from what? Savior from the fires of hell. It's really there. It's really going to be a decision come Judgment Day for every individual. You either go to heaven or you go to hell. Which do you want? And if you joke and say, oh, well, I'm just going to go to hell. Well, why don't you prove it for yourself just a little bit? Get yourself a book of matches and strike one and hold your hand over that match and see how you like it. And you think that's foolish. Yes, I think it's foolish that you joke about hell. Because you really don't want to go there. So I'm inviting you 
to keep coming back and to, if you don't have a Bible, go buy one, get one. And it's nice to have one to start off with that follows our calendar so that it's a daily thing. Right away, you know if you're two days behind or what. And it gives you a portion of the Old Testament, the New Testament, a psalm, and a proverb every day. A well-balanced meal of scriptures. So, Lord, please inspire your people to pick up their Bibles, to get a little bookmark and put it in the place where they left off so that it's easy to keep on going. Precious Lord, we're asking for an absolute avalanche of evangelism, an avalanche of the Holy Spirit moving amongst the people, doing great signs and wonders, doing healings and deliverances, bringing people out of bondages, mending relationships and marriages, raising up godly children who have faith working for them in their lives so they aren't afraid, so they know that they can come to Jesus. Precious Lord, we're believing and we want to help with a great moving of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah to the Lamb, the Lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world. You are working your plan out of salvation. And Lord, we don't want to see anybody lost and miss it when you come. For we are looking for you to come in the clouds the second time like you said you would. And so, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your Holy Ghost. We thank you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that we can pray in tongues, a language you will give us, and we will pray things that you want. And you can pray in tongues, and you can go right back to your native tongue. There's no bondage. It's a freedom of prayer. It's a special time of prayer. And I pray that you seek him for it so that you are filled to overflowing with the Holy Ghost. And that's how we will be able to sustain ourselves against all of the strikes of the devil. They will just bounce off of us. In Jesus' mighty name, I love you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.